What's up, guys? It's your girl, Chris Childs, Chris Fly, number one and only Fubu Radio. You know, I'm glad you're tapping in and locked in, but you know the only way to truly stay tapped is what I'm following. Hey, what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up? It's your girl, Chris Childs, Chris and, White. And it's your boy, Kizo, here. What's happening? What's up? We back, you know, for another conversation. Yeah, you, you, you dragging me back to the conversation. I think this is I mean, why did the, I drag you back? Or, no, I think know. we had a great time last week. So, you know, let's let's do it. Let's keep doing it. Let's see how it goes. Let's see how mm. it goes. You let us know how it goes. You know what to do. Hit us up on the socials at Official Food Radio, at Chris Childs. Don't forget that Y. And at Mr. Kizo, M-R-K-E-E-Y-Z-O. Don't forget the Y. Yeah. See, now you want to say don't forget the Y. Yeah, you know, I'm biting. I'm biting. That's cool. Sounds good. <laughs> All right. You know, I think we can get into a few things today, but let's stay, you know, within the realm of the living in the new era, the new age. Okay. All right. All right. So, I mean, let's start with something a little bit light. You know, Zuckerberg, you know, released uh, new smart glasses. You know, they're going to retail oh. start at two ninety nine. So, essentially, like those shades you're wearing right uh-huh. now, you could talk to them and ask them things like, um, well, what's that hmm. say? And where's the directions? You can stream live. Um, we're it's really, a little too much, though. I mean, I mean, if you're not ask me, it's like plugging into the <laughs> matrix. It's definitely too much. But people are already living vicariously through their phones, right? They, as soon as they go to the concert, they're watching their the concert through their phones to make sure they have the perfect shot. Yeah, I mean, you know, I get it. But the camera eats mm. before you do when you're going out to eat. I, I mean, I'm, I was guilty of that, and mm. I, I've had to put my phone down, like, and enjoy the moment like sometimes we forget that we're in the moment and we want to film it but you know the whole time you're like this and then at the end of this end of the uh show your battery's dead not only that we're desensitized like you said you're not feeling it we're yeah. desensitized from feeling the music from being at the concert from being at the place but even down to what we film we film crime we film major horrific episodes that are happening to other people to stream it to say that we're sharing it which you know a lot of the times when it comes to you know, the government and other shady stuff that's going on, it's helpful to film, but mm-hmm. you become so desensitized that you're you're filming someone dying or bleeding out and not helping, mm-hmm. you know? And I think with the glasses, I think you're right. Like, listen, it has its positives and it has its negatives like anything else, but I think more negatives because think about the person that's zoned in while they're walking. Traffic. Uh, it's just a little too much. I mean, even the phones are invasive at this point. Mm-hmm. And I think what we have to turn these phones off, right? I think we about to get I hit have, with a yeah. What you call afternoon? Four. Four o'clock. Four o'clock. Oh, okay. Jesus. Yeah. Uh, but that's a whole another situation. We don't <laughs> need that going off. But um, I mean, yeah, it's a little bit too invasive. But people are going for it because when you're talking about hands free, even think about us driving through Manhattan. How many times you see people with their selfie sticks and their stands recording entire episodes? And in that case, it might be helpful. You're completely hands free, documenting. But I don't know. I don't they know. start retail pricing at two ninety nine. I mean, that's the starting price to get people hooked. Yeah, and then when you go to the store, it's gonna be nine ninety nine. You know, all the add-ons. <laughs> oh, you want this color with that lens? Oh, oh, you want uh, more than two megabytes? Uh, <laughs> that's going to be nine ninety nine. Well, you know how that goes. Let me know what you guys think. Is this too invasive? Are you willing to try it? Um, is this something that you would implement in your day-to-day life? Are you bad at directions? Maybe if you're in another country and you want to read the signs quickly, that might be helpful. Mm. No. Still I don't know. I, you know what it is? I think for me, I'm a little old school. You know, I, even though I'm into the technology, it's so far. That it's, it's, it's only so much that I'm going to allow myself to get into, if that makes sense. It's I like, get what you're so, you know, some things to me, like, you know, like a lot of people put, um, like, if you have a, a, a gazillion followers, you're like the it person. Like, mm-hmm. And you just have a bunch of followers with people who want to look into your life. And I'm sure, like, if you sold a record, you won't go platinum that day. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You might go 10,000. It's very so, Black Mirror-ish. Yeah, you know, so when people say, you know, oh, I'm famous because I'm on social media, I'm just like, ugh. Yeah. You know, like, be famous in real life and then just let social media enhance that, you know? Not for real. 
Speaking of social media, onto the, some other new age era stuff. There's been a lot of breakups. You not notice mm-hmm. that? Like celebrities breaking up back to back. But what's actually been a little questionable for me, at least, everybody's kind of releasing a statement. You know, like, is that the new requirement for a breakup? (laughs) Like, I need to release a statement to let everybody know we're fine, we're still besties, you know, or does the statement imply maybe there's more to it than what they're saying? Yeah, I I don't know. I think, you know, it's when they come to a a decision like that, then you have everybody putting out their narratives, so they kind of want to jump ahead of that and you know, put their own narrative out before anybody can, you know, mm-hmm. assume anything. So I don't know. Sometimes you just got to keep your stuff off of social media. Yeah. Like I post my wife here and there, you know, sometimes she'd be like, tag me. I'd be like, you don't need to be tagged. You already <laughs> up there. You don't, they don't need to know your page. But, you know, and sometimes that may be too much for people because then mm-hmm. you have people who may look at your significant other and be like, mm, let me go to his page or let me send her, let me send her a note or, or a DM Testing or whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, sometimes a crazy. I mean, sometimes I think like you're right. You don't want people in the business like Tiana Taylor and Iman Shumpert. Like that was a little bit like, oh, my goodness. But they did it the right way. Nobody even knew they were broken up. Um, once things started getting out, she's like, listen, this is my friend. We're doing great. I don't need the narrative going that way and nip it in the butt. But in the case of Tamar Braxton and Jeremy, I think, uh, Robinson, her fiance. Oh, they just broke up, too? Yeah, they broke up, too. But, you know, we alluded to that because someone had broken into our house a Mm -hmm. a month back. Mm -hmm. Um, She was alluding to being alone. And then the statement comes out. And the statement primarily says, you know, I'm healing. I'm trying to get back to a positive environment. Um, You know. (laughs) So on and so forth. It wasn't necessarily damning, but it was one of those statements that if you can read between the lines, like, mm-hmm. what do you mean trying to get back to a positive environment? Like, and people are speculating. I, and like, I think I think people jump into into things for the wrong reasons. You know, some people may be looking for fi- financial comfort. You know, some people might just move too fast. I, I've never been the person to move too fast because I'm a Scorpio, so I'm a, I'm a kind of study you. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Before I even get to that point, mm-hmm. it's New York City, y'all. And, you know, y'all we got that? it's live. You know, <laughs> we all these floors up in the air, and they still hear that like it's right outside the window. No, it wouldn't be real New York if you didn't hear the sirens. <laughs> sorry, sorry to our production team. You guys are gonna have to uh, gonna have to hear that out. If you could do anything with it, please let us know. <laughs> But yeah, I, like you said, I think people just jump to conclusions. Um, but it's gotten to the point where just everybody is releasing the statement. It's it's gotten to a point where everybody's releasing a statement. You don't mm-hmm. even know what's going on. It's just like I didn't even know y'all were together. Yeah, no. <laughs> it's like is this the publicist kind of way of doing things? I'm marketing. I think I'm having microphone difficulties. Oh. No, just hold this part and lift this part up. Lift this part. This part. Oh, yeah, there, there you go. go. Sorry. There you go. It's all right. <laughs> comfortable now but yeah I don't know I'm not for the statements I think keep it private uh, Beyonce and Jay-Z for instance you don't know what the hell going on in their marriage just the infamous yeah. uh, elevator fight yeah the Becky with the good hair you know <laughs> they made money off of the speculation in the music money you know, definitely you did lemonade and, and what was mm-hmm. it 444 was it that he made yep. a couple of things yeah. listen this this uh, you know this whole thing, because, you know, I, I was reading, uh, actually uh, saw something with uh, Lorenz Tate. And he mm-hmm. said that, you know, how he survived his his marriage for 16 years was just keep it private. And I think that's the best that's the best thing. You know, you can't let everybody in your business. You know, social media has opened us up to be more out there and more sharing. But mm-hmm. you can't share everything. Like, I, for instance... Blueface and Krishan. Oh my goodness! It's everything so toxic. they do is like, oh, look at this. Oh, she's doing this, and you have to tell everybody. I, I, I'm, you know, like I said, I'm a little older, so I don't get that. But no, that you know. Blueface and Krishan is the information that I think was forced onto me. The fact that I know what's going on tells me how much it's circulating, and the blogs eat it up because the people eat it up. They comment mm-hmm. whether you got to realize every little bit of engagement, whether you're saying like ill or what the hell is she doing, or whatever the case. Every piece of engagement makes that 
piece of content more visible you know right. when she's on live but like listen they created a formula they figured out how to make money by yeah. keeping us being tuned disruptive in. yep you know yep. and that's what it ultimately comes down to you know because these are people that are public figures now public figures whether they're role models whether they have brand endorsements deals every part of their um being is marketable you know so they can't mess that up and i understand why certain statements are put out but you know like uh in terms of other couples that I really admire, which you really don't ever hear about, Angela Bass, Bassett and Courtney Vance. Oh yeah, you know, that's old love school. Them. So yeah, that's old, old school. school. You know, you know, people. You know, you gotta you gotta know your movies, all right. You gotta know your movies to know those people. But yeah, you should keep things private. But um, if you feel the need, I think I guess in regular life, maybe you come from a big family, you know, and everybody loves the other side of the family. You know, maybe they might want to say something. Yeah, but, you know, you have best friends, you have girlfriends, you have, you know, cousins that maybe, you know, that person that you turn to to have these discussions with. I don't think having them with people who don't matter in your life, just having these, posting these things out there to let everybody get in everybody your business is, is just, you know, and then some people are going to troll you, you know. It's just, mm -hmm. it's just that, it is what it is. They're going to troll you, they're going to call you all stupid things because they know if you respond... And they're lit, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. they got you down. So you know, oh, they're gonna be talked about. And some people, that's what you know. Some people only care now about listen, is just being talked about. You can about. control your image. You control 100% of the things that you put out onto social media. If you don't want it out there to Facts. be talked about, <laughs> then don't put it out there to be talked about. Facts. You know, because yep. even when we're talking about Krishan and Blueface, they could literally just be putting out this one aspect of their life because they don't know it's profitable. And for all you know, the three of them are just. Living happy in the house, you know, and no, you got a lot of that though. You, you know, got a lot of that, and it people works. just fronting for, you know. I was watching um, Saturday. I saw a version of Catfish, and I love Catfish. <laughs> they they didn't have enough money to see each other, mm -hmm. so they created this story that they wanted to be together, and they didn't think their story was gonna get picked up, <laughs> and their story got picked up, and it was the way that they were able to see each other, but. Once Neve started doing a little digging, he realized that they were already conversating and things that they were saying wasn't true because they were actually having a conversation yeah. for years. So they figured it out and they wound up, you know, getting together. They they weren't going to air the show, mm -hmm. but then they wound up airing the show. But it's just, you know, things like that, that people do things for clout or do things just to to be relevant i don't know i don't know what what it is can't get in the mind of that uh, i can't sticky because i come from the old school where it's mm -hmm. more like um you know be heard not seen you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. like you don't necessarily or or have things going on where you're not necessarily telling everybody what's going on move in silence as they call it you know that's a fact and when it's ready to pop out you know, or pop off or, or you're ready to pop out, then you do that. But, like, I hate when people put up, like, false and I don't want to say false announcement, announcements, but they'll have a meeting about something that's going on. And the first thing they do is come out of the meeting and post it. Mm -hmm. But there's no ink that's drying or being signed or, you know, they're just having a conversation yet. You know, and I get willing into an existence, but at least let it get to a point where you know it's going to work out right. and then post it. Yeah. Because now you didn't post it and then 90 days later, somebody's saying, well, what happened with so-and-so? Oh, we still working on it. Mm -hmm. But why did you post it? Yeah. You know, now you have to repost it instead of... Jumping the gun. Yeah. Our emotions uh -huh. at our fingertips, which goes back to maybe why it's not such a good idea to have these uh, new Zuckerberg glasses. Um, for the metal universe, because think about it, you know, I forget what's that um, that basketball player who got in trouble for holding the guns on social media and then oh, got John Moran. Again. Yeah, think about all the glasses of the stupid kids. They're gonna self-incriminate themselves, do, middle of doing something. Now I know what you're already saying. They shouldn't be doing anything to incriminate themselves with anyway. However, Listen. you know it's gonna get real messy. Everything for out there for you to see. So you're right. You gotta monitor and, and then private. you know um like how much stuff do you want to see like if you're recording you know or you press and record on these glasses and you're watching it it's just like it's almost like when people to me when people 
running around with the GoPros. Like they mm-hmm. have the GoPros and they're recording everything. And I get it. Sometimes you're doing it for your trip or whatever, or you're riding a motorcycle or whatever. But it's just some stuff you don't want to catch. And, and you know what I'm saying? And ultimately, you catch it because you have it on all the time. Mm-hmm. Or you say something, you get caught saying something because remember you, you forget that it's on. Back. You remember how, look, how many, people, how many people get caught? With the mic on and forget they got the mic on to say something. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like the same thing. Kind of like the same thing. Say something, you know. So for all of y'all that are not faithful, mm-hmm. it's going to get messy. It's going to get messy. We're not going to stay on that. But, you know, if you're going to buy them, let me know. I want to see what your experiences are like. I'm down to talk about it. All right. Um, new era. There's going to be no pandas after this year. It's China's be- taking back all their pandas from America. <laughs> It was supposed to happen at four. <laughs> wow, it's everywhere. It's on my watch. It's on my phone. Wow. Okay, we have to turn those off. I'm trying to. <laughs> it wouldn't matter. Yeah, everybody's trying to turn their phone off now. That's annoying. Like, I, I, I don't understand why they did it or why they're doing it. Uh, they said that they just want to test all the phones, but... It makes no sense. It doesn't. It makes no sense. So China owns all the pandas out here in the world? Well, China owns all the pandas in the United States. And they, oh, they are do? on loan from oh, um, China that. into the zoos. But, you know, America owes uh, China, like, billions of dollars. So uh, there's been multiple attempts at renewing the contracts. They renew the contracts every three years to get the pandas to stay in the zoos. So after 2023, as they already started taking the pandas back, there aren't going to be any more. Mm-hmm. So if you get a chance to go to the zoo or anywhere where you can see a live panda, this will be the first time in 53 years wow. that there hasn't been pandas. <clears throat> on I don't care. States I don't care. But at least you can tell your grandkids, like, you know. I say, look, this is a, a picture of a panda. <laughs> 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 this is what they call a panda. So you- so you don't care about the pandas? I don't care they're about just, them. They're just... Listen, I, you know, I, I think that it is what it is. Mm-hmm. You know, you, it's not like... With the internet, you can see everything. You know, so if you're not able to go to the zoo, just go on your phone to the internet and pick up panda. Like, it's, it's not I mean, that with the eye and holograms and stuff, you, you know, pretty much have a panda in your living room listen, without the listen. danger. I mean, the pandas never really come out anyway. I ain't never seen no panda. <laughs> so it don't bother you. It don't anyway. bother me. I ain't never seen one. I think I seen one Maybe years that one ago, time. Years ago. Or maybe you went to the zoo and it didn't come yeah, out and it was a disappointment. I was actually, um, yeah, I was in the zoo. I forgot where, where exactly, but it doesn't bother me. And <laughs> yeah, my grandson is too young. He's only four. He don't know about no pandas. So. I'm sorry. You can literally tell him anything. You know? <laughs> Hope he doesn't pull this back. <laughs> Listen. All right. All right. So last week we was talking. Mm-hmm. Um, I said I wanted to kind of bring something up with the whole love and hip hop universe. Right, right, right. just kind of wanted to delve in that. As you know, Erica Mina, she's been pretty much going through the ringer. Everybody's been just canceling her, calling mm-hmm. her a racist, the colorist, so on and so forth because of her remarks against mm-hmm. Spice, right? Like I said, for a while, I didn't want to see say anything. I wanted to see how it played out, what people had to say, mm-hmm. what was going on. And then, I'm not sure if you're aware, Love & Hip Hop had a special where they got everybody around a round table to talk about colorism and their experiences mm-hmm. with colorism. Um, so, <sighs> I try not to watch it. I mean, I, it's not even, I'm going to be honest, I try not to watch it either, but it really is the My main wife topic reels of, me in. She's, she's like, like, uh-uh, this is what's happening. She's like, can I see the remote? <laughs> I get rid of the remote, boom, love and hip hop. I'm like, really? I know. You don't really have to watch it to really be in the vibe of what's been going on. It's been all over Listen. social media, all over news. Well, you know, gossip news networks. But, I mean, I just want to touch on it for a second. Mm-hmm. You know, because it is a very sensitive topic, and um, we do have to realize the platforms that this stuff is coming from. You know, I think we touched on a little bit last week that, you know, it's just a lot of um, negative impact on how 
they portray themselves as women for entertainment. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it's a check. You know, these people are mostly scripted, yeah. like you said. I, I get it, but mm -hmm. I just, you know what it is? I, I never want to be that person to sell my soul for a check. Absolutely. You know, because a lot of times when you look on TV or you look at these shows and they're doing things or they're acting a certain way, then when you see them in person, it's nothing like that. And mm -hmm. then it's like, oh, I thought y'all hate each other, but yeah, besties, you know? Right. So, it's not even like that. It's crazy, you know? I don't know. Who's knocking on the door? Today is that kind of day. I'm loving it. It's like an episode from back in the day. Like, who's coming in? Who's that knocking on my window? It's a package. getting a delivery I didn't know I was getting. All right, special delivery. Oh, sorry. We're back. Yeah. I'm loving today. It's like a whole yeah, bunch of little things happening. You this know, is, this is a disruptive real. day. <laughs> <laughs> this is it's disruptive good. Day it's good today. for the BTS. Um, no, you're right. You know, it, it's definitely, they sell their souls for entertainment. Um, but I think a lot of people are so, again, back into this cancel culture. Mm -hmm. You know, um, oh, we hate this person. It's called selective outrage. You know, like I'm going to decide time to time what I'm going to be upset about because it's not even about saying she was right or she was wrong calling her a blue monkey, you know. And at the end of the day, you know, there's arguments to both sides. You know, you talk about the girl's children, whether you talked about the kid directly or referenced her parent thing when it comes mm -hmm. to her child. You know, some people feel like that's below the belt. You know, should she go there? No. But then again, that's ignorance to lack of history and hurtful words and, you know, also, your environment where you grow up. This girl is not a Caucasian girl. You know, she comes mm -hmm. from the hood, you know, in mm -hmm. her aspects. You know, she's a Latina, a fire Latina. Mm -hmm. um, again, I'm not giving a excuse to her behavior. But what I am trying to say here is um, people want to be selectively outraged. Because when those other people call you monkeys and, you know, the N-word and this and that, you know, where's the same outrage? Because when it comes to the Jewish community, they don't play that. You did what? You said what? <laughs> you know, like, mm, nope, you're done. You're canceled. They're going to hit you where it hurts. Right. Now, granted, they're definitely going on the let's cancel Erica Mina outrage. Like, you know, she's losing shows and endorsements but it's for everybody who's going to drop her there's someone to pick her up you know right because again there's not a, enough collective outrage between us to be upset enough about it where why is it okay for us to be upset when it only comes to her but not when it comes to tom jack and jerry you know mm -hmm. um and then the round table I, I get giving everybody a platform to say how they feel about things, but again, you're giving a platform for selective outrage. It was coached. It was not a, that much pain. And it was. It shock. was it. Was it the uh, people from Love and Hip Hop? Or yeah, was, people from uh, okay. Love and Hip Hop. Okay. You know, Yandy, Safari, uh -huh. Spice, and granted, valid points were made, but again, this was manifested off of the train of the let's. Yeah let's hate Erica Mina or let's punish Erica Mina, right. you know? But at the end of the day, let's really be honest. Times are changing. You have to be careful what you say because, I mean, I was watching a commercial the other day on um, TikTok and it was talking about Band-Aids and they were saying, you know, let's help, you know, the R word when it comes to the mentally disabled per person. You can't even say that anymore, but they just said it so bluntly because yeah. there were no politically correct terms at that point right. so now that we're getting into that place of this isn't right and say this instead and this and etc cetera, etc cetera, you know you can't you have to Man, be very listen. very careful your best bet is to move in silence. You would have been canceled coming growing up with me because <laughs> everybody was calling everybody all kind of names and it was accepted or yeah. or not but it was it, it, it was what, what about it was. those brutal yo mama um battles yeah, it's crazy my mother, it got to the point where I used to fight so much when I was younger that my mom, she would say, you got to stop letting people affect you with their words. Like, you, you're letting them get yeah. to you and, you, and you, you, you're just snapping and you got to learn how to either talk back or, or deal with it or just let it flow off you like a duck or, you know, but you can't. I, I used to fight all the time because of something that somebody said. 
until I learn how to channel it. See, I'm, I'm the exact opposite. I'll just sit there mad, cold, and stoic, because I'm just like, okay, those are your words. And that would actually get me in more trouble, because then the opposite person would just get a little bit more upset, you know? And it's just like, <sighs> control yeah. or too much control? That is the question. Yeah, yeah. You know, but um, it, listen, it's entertainment, and it's going to cease to be entertainment when you guys cease to make it entertaining. You know, at the end of the day, you don't so like that, it. That's what I was going to ask you. So what do you think? Do you think it will stop? Like, when will it continue this trend of, of being like this? So you think people will get tired of it? And, <sighs> you know, because it's always, a, it's always a, a, a change, you know. It, 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 everything well, goes so we far. We have to be very careful about what we're doing. When we get into this cancel culture, into this, you can't say this, you can't say that. We have to get, be very, very careful because what we're doing is we're self-sabotaging or self-removing our freedom of speech. Mm -hmm. You know, because, again, we grew up differently. We came from the era of sticks and stones will break your bones, but no words will never hurt you. You mm -hmm. learn self-control. You learn discipline. You learn emotional control. Um, and I think by... Again, not to condone this behavior, you know, I think by taking away the choices of what they do, you're taking away the exercise on how to control it should it happen, which is why we're having so many sensitive <coughs> adults who are going on rage rampages and hurting and killing people because one, they can't take rejection or somebody said something to you. You know, we're going very slowly into a, a totalitarian state, you know, by choice. So it's a little dangerous. Um, yeah. Now, it's a lot of it's a, it's a lot of crazy things going on out here. Um, it's just people are shooting each other. I saw something the other day where somebody was pranking this this guy or trying to prank him, and the guy told him leave him alone a couple times, and he didn't want to leave him alone. He kept prank, you know, messing mm -hmm. with him, and the guy just casually just had a gun in his pocket and just pulled out a gun and he shot did. the dude, and then got acquitted. Yep. <laughs> Yep. He's it's self wild defense. times. I'm like... It's wild times. I never got those pranks. I, I just... I don't understand why you want to play with somebody to get that kind of uh, fight or flight reaction out of someone. We're dealing with some wild times. Financial, um, emotional, you know, even relationships have such a different dynamic that we can't even possibly judge the effect that it has on us long term because the way that we even exchange love and care for one another has changed mm -hmm. so drastically. You know, talking about changes drastically while we're on this, you know, I actually saw a clip of a young woman, right? She was in a gas station, maybe 19 to 21, maybe max, right? Mm -hmm. Let's say 17 to 21, right? She comes into the gas station and she talks to the teller and she says to him, like, listen, um, I'm by myself. I've never pumped my gas before at night. Um, do you mind coming outside with me? Because I don't really feel safe. It's nighttime, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm wearing shorts. Right. And... The teller who's like, um, I mean, I'll watch you on the camera. You know, two African-American kids. You know what I'm saying? He's in probably in his 20s, early 30s, right? Um, and he's like, well, I'll watch you on the camera. And she's like, you can't come outside with me? Like, I'm telling you that, like, I don't feel comfortable, like, I, like a man's presence. And he's like, to be honest with you, this sounds like a setup. I can watch you on the camera, but this sounds like a setup. You might be telling the truth but I'm not really willing to take that risk. And that's heartbreaking on both sides. Mm -hmm. That is so heartbreaking on both sides because, you know, as a female who really don't, doesn't have any bad attention, and I'm like literally just freaking out outside and I need gas to get right. to my destination, I'm asking this black man who I'm supposed to believe is my protector, mm -hmm. and he's telling me like, nah, you good, but can I really <laughs> blame him? Because there are women out there that will line him up. Nah, listen. You, you got to play both sides of the fence. Um, if he felt comfortable, I'm sure he would have got up and did it. But mm -hmm. it probably was sketchy or she she was stumbling or mumbling. Or, and he just was like, mm, nah. And then, you know, it's unfortunate that we live in a world where they, they set you up like that. Mm -hmm. You know, you get caught like that. Um, and there's nothing you can really do but just, just you know, just take it on the chin. Um but, you know, and I know from being from New York, you know, we move different out here in New York. Um, somebody asked me one time would I ever move out of New York, and I said, probably not because New York gives me my edge. Like, if I move somewhere, yeah, I still have that New York edge, but I know I would lose something because, like, when you're here, 
you got to get up, you got to get out, you got to get mm-hmm. something. You know yep. what I'm saying? You got to make something happen because if you don't, somebody else is going to eat your food. You know what I'm saying? Or those opportunities will go to someone else because you didn't allow yourself to to be in that room. You know what I mean? So it, it's just a different beat in New York. Um, and, you know, a lot of friends of mine who tell me that, they be like, yo, yeah, yeah, I like this in New York. And I'm like, yeah, mm-hmm. and it's like that. Like, if I go somewhere else, I always expect it to be like this. I always expect things to be open. I always expect yeah. me to be able to go do anything I want. And it's like, uh, uh, y'all close at 2? Uh, mm-hmm. What? Uh, this close at 9? Like, what do you mean? You ain't got no 24-hour? Th- it also opens your you know? eyes up to how much you live compared to many, many other places. Though exactly. You'll never understand the fast pace of it because... You know, even when I was living in Philadelphia for a short time, I think at the time I went to the club, I was like, okay, I'm going to get there at like 1.30, 1.45. The lights were already on when I got there. I was so confused. I was just like, oh, and there's nothing to eat? Nothing? Nothing? <laughs> you know, so it definitely is a culture shock. But shout out to everybody who don't have their own nightlife going down. I know y'all got something underground everywhere. Got to explore those. And then New York is, is a place where you can literally get I don't care what you're into you know what kind of lifestyle you leave it is so much everybody has their their thing here you know Mm -hmm. you might have to go down in this area to get to that you can go uptown you'll be over here with it's it's an area if all you have to do is know what's going on if you're Mm -hmm. in the loop it's endless things going on for everybody as you know, for loop. all genres, all, you know, social status, you Only know, that, everything. You have the opportunity to create it, too. Yeah, and then if, if you, if it's not out there, like you said, you can create it. You can create it. And, I mean, and if you were anywhere, and if you don't have something that you think is lit, create it. You know, if you feel like, yo, I want a little bit of New York, never get the New York flavor anywhere else. But you can create something that exists within your own environment. All right. I think that was pretty much, you know, all my new age, new era stuff. Like anything that you want to touch on that you feel like um, is, has been changed and weird. I think this 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 political system, and I'm not really deep into politics, but just watching what's going on with these grown ass men who are playing like baby games and head games and just doing all this craziness, like. I just want to just take everybody and just wash everybody out mm-hmm. and just replace them with younger people who know what's going on, know the times. Like, you know, I watched uh, the Kenneth McCartney get, get ousted from Speaker, and I'm like, so did he get ousted from Speaker because he didn't shut the government down? Mm-hmm. Was that? <laughs> it, I think the games just become a little bit clearer on like, what's going like, on. Like you know, and I didn't, I didn't see the whole story this morning, but I'm pretty sure that's what I heard. And I was mm-hmm. like, what, "What is going on? Like, yeah. why are the people who run this country trying to create so much mass hysteria? You know, then they got the uh, what else? They the 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 the, the char- what did they call that thing? Congestive pricing, oh. mm-hmm. like. You're going to make a lot of people lose their job. You're going to have a lot of companies close down because they can't afford to, they won't be able to afford but afford it uh, to come into the city to make, you know, do their business. But and it's like, you just come out of a, to. yeah, but you just come out of a pandemic. That is the best thing that you can think of right now mm-hmm. is to just hit people in their pockets. Yeah. You know, even more, you know, and I, I pay a grip. I pay like, Close to like six hundred dollars a month mm-hmm. just to, just in tolls. Oh yeah, you just know what I'm saying? Tolls, just in tolls, and parking, I'm like, if you got to park. Luckily, I, I you know parking is not a problem for me, but you know just the tolls is like six hundred dollars a month. So you're gonna add anywhere from nine to twenty three dollars on top of that. Mm-hmm. I think it's gonna be is is really gonna make the city. I don't know if they're gonna do it and just up up uphold it because. So many people are going to lose their jobs. No, absolutely. So many people, they're going to be like, okay, well, why should I go away to the city or drive to the city? You know, you cannot make somebody take the train. 
The trains are well, they're unsafe. They're trying to make it a community you city You know, altogether. the trains are unsafe. The MTA are thieves. Yep. You know, they they get uh, uh, enormous amounts of money, and every year they need more money and more every money. Every year it's fair. And hikes. what's crazy is I know of people who work at MTA. So say, for instance, you got to be at work at 12, right? And you get off at 8 in the morning. You be standing, they be standing in the tunnel for like four, five, six hours, and then they, they work for an hour and a half, and then boom, they go home. Yeah. But they get paid for working eight hours. Now, I get it, you know, maybe you have to set things up or whatever, but you need to make it more efficient <laughs> for these workers to work more yeah, hours. Yeah, MTA gets banked. They get you know? some big checks, too. And it's like, okay... You, you just raised the fair prices, right? Mm -hmm. Now you're doing congested pricing, which is supposed to add to your bottom line. Mm -hmm. So watch next year, they raise the the, the prices again. It's I ridiculous. Mean, it's ridiculous, but you know what? If you read like a lot of these like books, like The Matrix as well, and even the movie In Time with Justin Timberlake, where they uh -huh. talk about um, even Hunger Games. Mm -hmm. You know, everything is based on district. Obviously, the middle of the district is the richest, you know, especially mm -hmm. in In Time. Um, the further you go out, it gets a little bit poorer, a little bit poorer, drastically poorer, slums, and no man's land. Right. You know, but that's how you control the masses. You push them out so that you can only force and funnel money in while getting your supplies and stuff from the outer regions. You know, now granted, it's fiction, science fiction, fantasy, et cetera. But they always say, like, you know, if you don't know certain aspects of literature or history, you know, you're doomed to kind of fall into certain traps. And some of these things, like, kind of have been written before and it's almost uncanny. Mm -hmm. Even, you know, reading the Bible, you know, 48 laws of power, you know, they tell you the tactics where these people, their heads are at and what they do because essentially everything has um, a cause and there's, there's an effect, right? Mm -hmm. Something happens and then something happens after it. It's just, you know, psychological warfare at this point. Mm -hmm. I know that if I do this, people will get upset. And while people are upset, we could pass these laws and they would think, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So when you're talking about all these things, it's almost like I've seen it before, mm -hmm. just not in my lifetime. You mm -hmm. know, it's quite unfortunate. Like the COVID movie. Mm -hmm. Is that Contagion, was it? Yep, Contagion. Yo, I saw that movie... Again, because I've seen it before when it came out, but I didn't Seeing it make post reference yeah, to COVID at the time. And then somebody said, you know, they had a movie about it. And it was mm -hmm. like Contagion. I was like, I saw that movie. Yeah. And then everything started to come back. And I watched it again. And when I watched it again, I was like, so they basically took this movie and just did everything that was in this movie. Because mm -hmm. this movie came out, what, like 2014 mm -hmm. or 2010, Something somewhere like that. Like that. And that's all he did was just literally use everything that was in the that entire movie. Entire plot, everything. The 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 way they vaccinated people, the way you know, they they segregated people. It mm -hmm. was it was crazy, and you know now everybody's getting COVID again exactly. for some reason, you know. And 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 I, I really you know wonder like people are mad about this whole vaccination thing, but I really wonder like. How can you come out with a vaccine so quick and want everybody to take it? And then you say all of these things that are not true. And then as time goes on, all of these things are proven to be not true. Mm -hmm. And then you keep changing the narrative and changing the narrative and changing the narrative and wanting people to believe everything you say. Mm -hmm. And it's like, no, you got to go do this. So now they're talking about the whole updated strain, the oh, updated yeah. vaccine vaccine and they got a uh a updated booster and listen and people ain't been getting covid since last summer now all of a sudden everybody's getting covid again yeah but nobody talks about the flu anymore or the common cold yeah you everything know, is covid these things and at the end of the day like i said this all comes down to behavioral tactics because let's see how it's like um when you're conditioning a, a bear or a monkey or a mouse even you're shocking them and mm -hmm. putting them in certain situations to force them to make certain decisions mm -hmm. you're conditioning them right. because when mm -hmm. you think about how they handle things during the spanish flu or mm -hmm. um during the holocaust or even slavery even it's all essentially the same tactic you know mm -hmm. create fear Mm -hmm. You know, create the savior aspect amongst the fear, mm -hmm. you know, and execute whatever your plan is. So, I mean, again, 
you don't know your history, you don't know your art, you don't know your literature, you're definitely doomed to stumble into something like, how did this happen? Because anybody with any type of sense or knows any type of history, you can look at certain things and say, yeah, I've read this book before. It's just mm -hmm. a different cast. Mm -hmm. It's the retelling. Yeah, and I was always taught to read between the lines mm -hmm. and question everything. Like, if something doesn't sound right to me, I have the right to question it. And I remember questioning when it when it was really going on mm -hmm. and people were just like, oh, it's the government. And they're not going to do this to you. They're not going to do that. I'm like, are you serious? The same government that don't take care of the veterans that went to fight for the for the country mm -hmm. and they're sleeping on the street? Mm -hmm. the, the, that government? Like, you got to be kidding no, me. The same government that told people that they had the vaccine for syphilis and actually injected people with syphilis, the Tuskegee experiment. Google yeah. it. It's crazy. Why we don't trust health care. You know, and I read something about healthcare. It was like, so back in the days, they created the 20% to keep you, like, you know, if you go to, to you get health insurance, they pay 80%, cent, 80%, mm -hmm. you pay 20%. They created that to keep us in this financial bind. Okay. You know, because a lot of people can't afford the 20%. You know, yeah. shit, I can't afford the 20% sometimes. Yeah. Like, I broke my arm and went to the doctor, and the bill was, like, almost $200,000. I was like, well, like, damn. What are you talking about? <laughs> what are you talking Like, two hundred? What For what? Where? Yeah, in other countries, you, you know, know, have a, a good health care system. They have um, the universal health care system. They charge you for coming in when you're actually healthy, not when you're sick. You mm -hmm. know, and they take care of you because that's how you keep the economy going. It's almost like we forgot or our leaders have forgotten the humanitarian aspect of things. You work for the people. You are here to keep the people safe, to keep the people clean, keep the people fed. The fact that we have a large rate of homelessness, you know, or astronomical rate prices. And then they letting all the migrants rent, in, mm -hmm. which, which the law was for New Yorkers. Mm -hmm. It wasn't for everybody. And I don't have anything against the migrants because I understand their plight. But we shouldn't be the only city Mm -hmm. taking in hundreds of thousands of Absolutely. people. Absolutely. You know, I'm pretty sure, you know, they, they need a place to stay. They need a place to sleep. But you got homeless people here and people here that need a place to sleep. Mm, are you doing the same? Considered. Are you doing the same thing for them? You yeah, know, it's definitely and, a and slap and a spit in their face. You know, you're sending all this money over to Ukraine, and I get it, you know, but why do it has to be us to send all the money to all Ukraine? Because... Right. When you read between the lines, there's an underlying element to it that we don't know about. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, and it's the reason why they're doing Absolutely. it. Absolutely. It's not in no way, shape, or form to make statements of saying, why do we have to help these people? But it's a matter of saying that our economy is so drastically imbalanced that how are we not thinking about the people? And like you said, that you have to think about the ulterior motive. Our plan. government is about to shut down because we're running out of money. But you're about to give this country two. Twenty billion dollars. Mm -hmm. That makes no sense to me. Mm -mm. No, not at all. Because not there's one. other deals and stuff. Yeah, it's like, other. It's know. kickbacks and all that other stuff that goes on. It's, mm -hmm. it's just retarded. To Everybody's me. washing their hands. I mean, listen. Our, let's be honest. The government is corrupt because not everybody who's in it is in it for the right reasons. But you know, we can only hope that mm -hmm. we can have conversations like these, open up the mind frame for people to really see the power that they have within themselves. And this also comes down to selective outrage. You can't be upset about one thing without understanding its entire, you know, root system. Mm -hmm. You know, like, it's like being mad at the thorn of the rose, but not understanding that it's a thorn bush that grows the roses. Hello. Oh, you like that? I just came up with that. Ooh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but nah, it's, it's sickening, and uh, that's why one of my life goals is to have a town. I can't. I need to have a town. I need to test this theory out. I'll keep you posted through my life journey. <laughs> Anything else you mad about? Uh, I think I'm finished. I'm finished venting for the you day. For the day? <laughs> I'm all right, y'all. Listen, we had a nice conversation. We tied it all in a bow for you. You know, we talked about the new era, the new age of things, you know, collectively. You let us know your thoughts. Um, how you feel about the glasses? How you feel about, you know, the government, the pandas? Do you care? Kizo doesn't care. I want to know if you care. All right. Um, oh, you know what? Two more things I want to bring up. Okay. You know, apparently some retirees are actually deciding to go on perpetual cruises instead of going to retirement homes because apparently it's cheaper to cruise around the world. And how long, how long are they going to cruise around the world? 
they can go for 52 and, weeks, two weeks. Uh, I'm sorry, two years. There's even two, three year cruises. Oh. And you're talking about like the cost of that kind of cruise versus monthly staying in a retirement home actually kind of sounds nice. Oh, no, that sounds great. Cause I you know I, I put my mother, my grandmother in the home, retirement place or uh, retirement home and they literally took all her money. And mm-hmm. I was like, wow, she saved up all this money. My grandmother was really wow. frugal, and she had a lot of money left. And obviously, you have to turn over all your money. So they can take to, care of you? Yeah. And I was like... Wow. Because she was saying, oh, I, I didn't got, know that part. She was like, yeah, I got some money I'm going to save. I'm going to give you and your sister, and this, that, and the third. And I was like, okay, grandma, I ain't thinking about that, though. <laughs> I, yeah. I just want you here. I ain't worried about your money. But she said, no, I saved up a substantial amount of money, and... But then when she went to the to the home, they took over a bank account, and I think they they split like I think she had about twenty nine hundred dollars left. Wow! <laughs> and they split it between me and my sister. Gave it to me. And my sister I was like, "Wow!" She That's and she crazy. had money. She had almost six figures. All right, you hear that? And Watch where like, you wow. put your family at. Make a plan. You know, especially if you're and close be, to listen, your loved ones. Another thing too, you got to be nice to your family because I know some people are really really a-holes and when you get older <laughs> you might be in a in a in a in a, a box or, or something standing up on the street you might be living in there because your family ain't gonna care about you you know you got to treat them right you know i know a lot of people who are just really you know really a-holes and just living wrong and if you don't get your your, your stuff together then it's going to happen I mean, yeah, that matters how you live your life yeah, and how you does. end your life too. Mm-hmm. And don't don't act reckless while you're young, thinking that you know you're gonna be filled and surrounded by the same love that you know is there for different reasons. So, don't be an a hole. All <laughs> right, all right. I guess that's it. But you already know the vibes. Hit us up on the socials, official Fubu Radio at Chris Childs. Chris, so why don't ask me why? Just do it. Error and Mr. Kizo M R K E E Y Z O. Tap in, follow us on Official Fubu Radio on IG. Um, we got a lot of things coming up. We're working on a ton of things, and uh, you know, you're gonna definitely want to be able to tap in and see what we got going on. Absolutely. So make sure you tap in. All right, we'll catch you later. Peace.